Hello everyone, welcome back to X Anima. I'm here with a character that you have not seen before. Uh, in level 3, near the beginning of level 3. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, just, well, I fancy a little bit of a change. But there is some content here which I haven't actually shown in my series yet. So when I've played story mode before in these videos, I have neglected, forgotten, or just not bothered to collect the compass. This item, a compass, there it is. A compass which you can find very, very near the beginning of level 1 when you first spawn. Now if you check out the uh, bottom left of the screen, when you add this compass to your inventory, you will see an actual working compass appears on the HUD. And as you turn the camera around, the compass moves. Very, very good uh, to sort of keep your bearing, something which the last time I was in level 3 in this series, uh, I failed quite miserably at. So, the reason why I'm in this room is because there are several um, written notes scattered around level 3, and I haven't actually bothered to collect them because I can't remember exactly where they all are, but they point to some contraband which has been hidden away in the level and some people are searching for this contraband and have failed to find it. Now when you find a room in this level, this is a spoiler by the way, if you don't want to know the location of a very cool secret item, uh, do skip on a few, uh, two three minutes in this video. Anyway, you find a room with these bookshelves which are set into arched uh, recesses in the walls. There is only one room in the level to my memory which actually has bookshelves that look like this. And when you find this room you will notice there is a rock in the wall just here which is protruding slightly. If you double click on that then it releases this bookshelf in a classic hidden passage way sort of style. <laughs> and we can vandalize the room while we're at it. Inside there is this small antechamber containing a chest. The chest contains this helm. This helm is in a fixed location. It's never random. It's always in this particular chest. This plate helmet, which as you can see is pretty good anyway, uh, although quite heavy. When you wear this helm, you are able to make out your surroundings even in complete darkness. So, when we shut ourselves in, and unequip the torch, you will see the helmet gives a slight blue iridescent glow. Now obviously it's not nearly as effective as the torch, it doesn't render the torch completely obsolete once you find this helmet, but just to compare here, if we unequip it, almost complete darkness. You can just make out the, the walls here and nothing inside, so when there are pitch black areas of the game as you can see, it does make things visible. And that is really good because it means that we can get rid of that torch on our primary equip load and replace it for a buckler. So that's a very useful item to have. And it's also a superior helmet to the one I was using before anyway. So, you know, pretty good. So that was those are two uh, key items in the story mode which I haven't actually um, kind of talked about before. And so that was uh, something that I just did wanted to kind of wanted to do something with and show off a little bit of. Um, there are also there's quite a few things in the story mode which I've just sort of skipped past or forgotten about or you know haven't been very thorough with when I've been playing this previously on the channel. I will kind of at some point I will get around to doing an in-depth story walkthrough, but uh, as it goes. It's just not really top of the pops right now, shall we say. So I wanted to just kind of have a bit of a mess around in story mode in this video. and I wasn't really sure how I was going to... how I was going to do it, but... Um, this is... is this... hang on a second. Yeah, this is the beginning. Right, okay, so... Um, I have already sort of been round... this is a Proctor character which I've built. Uh, called Gajarel, and she 
Well, I got the, the fixed healing tonic. I didn't find any others, but I wasn't really thoroughly searching every single room in the previous levels. I could go back through them. In fact, what I could do is now that I have this helm, actually, it's just to demonstrate something else, uh, which I remember, if I remember rightly is the case. Now, I may be actually a little bit wrong with this, but if you go back through uh, a previous level dividing bulkhead, uh, back here into level 2, and then if you just kind of just get yourself a little bit away from the door, and there's an NPC there, I will actually attack this guy because I have basically been attacking everyone that I've found with this character just to provide some um, experience for her for the later um, encounters. And there we go. So, what you got? Gomson cloth waistcoat uh, yeah why not so let's see we can actually add a skill here um, maneuvering an armor one will take deflection actively protect partly exposed parts of your body and weaknesses in your armor pretty useful so I've just been attacking everyone I see just and this hopefully here should reset the checkpoint and provide an updated checkpoint should I die. So that's a useful thing to have as well. And what I'm going to do is just very quickly speed through this level. Uh, I have taken out the skeletons but I haven't taken out the proctor who uh, patrols this level so we probably encounter her and hopefully uh, we should be able to deal with her without too much trouble because she is pretty nasty. Proctor on Proctor is, you know, a little bit preferable to fighting her as an unknown. And in the upcoming update uh, to the story mode, which we should find dropping relatively soon, uh, I believe that will reintroduce the night class as a, another unlockable. So, I what I imagine will, yeah. There's the proctor. What I imagine will be the case here is that um, fuck. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, never mind. I mean, fair's fair. If you have the Proctor Sword and you're laying waste to everything, then they should be allowed to do it. Uh, once again, I have already said this before, but if you want to unlock the Proctor class in the current build of the game, you have to get a Proctor's Seal. There is one always on this Proctor's person. Interact with it, as in by clicking on it once. Once this dialogue opens, which gives you a description, then the class is unlocked for you. I will take her sword as well, I suppose. Uh, I mean, it's not very good that I've lost all that health, but, you know, we may... I can go back off camera, I guess, and find another healing tonic and then re-update the checkpoints. What we'll do now is go through the portal and just mess around with some skellies. Because uh, going into you can go to level 5, as I showed, right from the beginning of level 4. But uh, it's much, much of a, more of a good idea to go through level 4 first because you can pretty much compile yourself a full set of plate armor uh, from attacking the skellies in this level and that it gives you protection from almost all red damage which you need when you fight the armored golems in level 5. I have one particular exploit which makes them easy well easier to deal with um, but I'm still really terrible at fighting those guys and I'm trying to sort of play more of a story mode and get my practice up um, for the purposes of the upcoming update. So, uh, the problem people in this level, the problem skellies I find are the ones with this two-handed sword, which is well-balanced two-hander, very good weapon uh, to take from them. Oh my god, not very good at all. And also the, peop the skellies who have the two-handed uh, mace, which is like a long sort of super mace thing. 
Very good too. Uh, good weapon. And worth taking. So we'll take this helmet, even though we are keeping with the light helmet for now. Uh, some pauldrons, and of course we'll take the the sword. We'll put that on secondary, and we will dump this two-hander, because to be honest, it's just not too good. Certainly in comparison. And there is this undead fella in this room over here, of course. Now, uh, I said in my original playthrough of this level, in my original video of this level, this playthrough is a bit rich, I said this guy was a proctor. Um, someone corrected me and quite rightly said that he wasn't. So, yeah, fair enough. But he is uh, an undead human who has a decent sword and decent skill set, so... He's not unlike the other Proctor. What sword does he have? Something similar to the Proctor sword. Light well crafted. Finely crafted and well balanced. Yeah. I don't really need what he's what he's take yeah, what we've taken off him, but nonetheless. So what did, what is this guy then? Is it someone who's locked himself in this room? I have never been so terrified. I was attacked by a huge dreadful creature, a demon perhaps. I tried to control it, but through, though its mind felt completely unguarded, it was oblivious to my intrusion. I was only able to confuse it briefly and get away. I am defenceless against this thing. I dare not venture out again. These dead guards, perhaps I could call them into action. I don't imagine they could do much against such a monster, but the distraction might cover my escape. So this guy, if I've understood this correctly, is the guy who's raised these skeletons up. Which is why uh, Sir is hostile to them, Sir being the big demon. I fear I don't have long left. I was aban I've, have abandoned my efforts to escape death. It was foolish, and yet I've accomplished so much. I must try and send word to Thaven. He will see the importance of my work, even though he is concerned with other matters. I believe Thaven's pursuits to be as hollow as my own, a stubborn refusal to accept bitter truths. After what I've seen here, anything seems possible. I will spend the rest of my days discovering what I can. I can still be of help. Indeed. Anything in here. No. Occasionally you can get lucky with these little uh, sort of, uh, what I would describe these rooms as offices or something. There's little offices down the end of this corridor. Occasionally you can get lucky with these containers and get like a health tonic or some really good armour out of them, but um, this just seems to be dishing out waistcoats. Okay, this is the one-handed skeleton mace. As in the sort of technology of those skeletons. What's that? Heavy padded coat. Nah, not so bothered about that. Um, there's a chest here. We will replace our sandals with these plate sabatons. Which are heavier, of course, but as you can see, very high stats on those. Much better coverage for, uh, you know, shoes as opposed to boots. Fuck's sake. I thought I'd taken the deflection skill. <laughs> alright, 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 alright. Fucking dead. You bastard, man. Of course, I won't be dead if he if he wins this just unconscious, but if that happens, I have no choice but to take the health tonic. Yep, that's happened. Uh, so, we are now very, very low on health, so I'm going to have to use the tonic when I wake up. Uh, and if I wake up with the guy still next to me, then I'm pretty much boned, because, yep, yeah, that's exactly what's happened. As you can see, <laughs> defeated again. Uh, this can be a problem, especially when you get defeated by Sir. Sometimes, I mean, he's programmed to just patrol randomly and, and attack everyone he encounters, but, wow, weirdly I managed to equip the sword as I was falling unconscious, which means I didn't drop it. So, that's alright. But, I am nearly dead. I'm going to have to use this now. And just kind of lurk while my health regens, which it does very slowly. 
Don't look in here though. And of course, the longer that you stay in this level, uh, the more skeletons will get um, defeated by Sir, and the more he will be weakened and possibly even defeated by them. Okay. Leggings. Better than uh, the than the shin plates that we had, so we're getting there in terms of full plate coverage. Yeah, we have. I mean, we have the chest plate, don't we? Oh, that, that is a, technically a curus, but you can get in within this uh, class of armor a full upper body set, which has um, upper arms built into it, and is a little bit longer. I just saw someone. Yep, it was you. Terrific. And what have you got? Oh, a battle axe. But you can get um, a full upper body set, which I... Uh... Oh, that one is a bit longer, actually. It's a different curus, but we'll we'll take we'll have that instead, and then yeah, take the van braces as well. Those leggings are different to ours. Um, not as good. So we're pretty well covered. Could do with you know, we're not nearly there yet. Could do with taking another maneuverability in armor perk, but, you know, we don't have the uh, experience at the moment. Is my health still regening? Looks like it might be very slowly. I heard something there. It's nice to sort of go around and take out the skeletons one by one if you can do that. See, it's, sometimes it's easier said than done because they uh, sort of have a tendency to gang up, especially if uh, Sir is nearby and then he has a, a way of accidentally herding them all into one place, you know? Um, that's that like, lecture hall. Don't think there's anything you can grab in here. I can't remember the locations of the keys. I seem to remember there's one like hidden under a table or something. I can't remember exactly. Have to do a bit more research on this level. This is the sort of central circular area. Uh, a lot of the corridors in this area like loop around on themselves. Is there anything in here? I don't. Oh, it's just a toilet. <laughs> yeah. Not bothered about that. So. Okay, my health was regening still. Yeah. So that's that's back to full now. But obviously. I will need to go, if I'm going to continue on like this, I will need to go and search for another tonic. Gauntlets, yeah, they don't combine with the van braces, but they do have um, upper arm coverage, so I'm going to stick with those instead. Slightly concerning lack of Sir so far. I feel like he's uh, on the verge of introducing himself. Mm. I've had many a battle with Sir in this particular area of the level as well. 
can be good to kind of confuse his uh, his bulky physics, getting him stuck on walls and things like that. Oh, didn't see you there, bud. Shit. Ah, this guy's the two-handed mace, which is a nasty one to fight against because it has immense range. Shit, I heard sir. Where is he? Ah, uh, guy's running. That means sir's uh, probably up here, right? Where is he? Where is he? Okay, I think we seem to have escaped that. For no. What have you got? Sword and board. It's alright. We're even. That means if I can win this one. Oh man, I'm really encumbered by this armour. If I can get this guy's shield, that would be a nice upgrade. Thank you. Yeah, very encumbered here, as you can see. So I am going to keep the leather buckler, just because I'm now going to be very, very slow and bulky. But, nonetheless, could be worse. This, like, conference room, I always thought that looked amazing. Really cool. Some dark shit going on in this level. Locked. I don't remember where the key is for that. I don't remember where any of the keys are in this level, which is really a fucking problem when there are so many long doors. Nope. Ooh, a helm. That is a, a really badass looking helmet, but of course, it doesn't cast light. It will take it nonetheless. I'll ditch that one, I think, because I don't really like that one as much. It looks quite elven. You know, it looks like a high elf sort of thing from like from like Dungeons and Dragons or Elder Scrolls or something like that, or Lord of the Rings. The kind of uh, crested helmet thing with the open face. I like more like the full face helmet like this. I think that looks really badass. More uh, realistic to European fantasy as well, which is obviously this is being a Western RPG is aesthetically kind of steeped in Western fantasy, which is what I more naturally identify with. Um, right, are you a different one or are you the same guy again? doesn't matter, but just good to know how many there are alive or dead in the level. Even though I can't actually remember how many skeletons there are, you know, to when you start the level. Fuck's sake. There's quite a few, though. Shit. How much HP have you got? And he ducked my attack as well. Brilliant. Brilliant. Just brill. Alright. I'm taking this as my secondary weapon. Might as well even give it a try, I suppose. Got all that. So this is back to where we came in. I think. Yeah. Which means we've done a full circuit. Well, a full circuit of that main concourse uh, without directly encountering Sir. So, if we go around again, have a look for Sir, and probably die very quickly to him, that would be a good place to leave it. I've already been in here, haven't I? 
Our glorious hero is little more than a killer. Now that his deadly work is done, he cares nothing for the consequences. Murder our gods so that we may be free and lost. I will not forget who saved us from oblivion. We have been warned far worse is coming, and our demise is now inevitable. Deep. I love the esoteric, uh, enigmatic lore in this game is really good. If you like, you know... I always said about... Uh, Oh right, no, I sorry, this is where the non proctor proctor was, yeah, right. I get I get it. I get it. I know where we are. Um so I always said of like again, comparing this to Dark Souls, which is something that everyone is kind of, everyone well, it's a game that's sort of in everyone's cultural consciousness, right? Everyone sort of knows what Dark Souls is and has heard of it, whether or not they're a fan or someone who's played it or not. Um one of the things that's really praised about that is like the the storytelling, the way that the story is told is is told in a way which could not be done through, um, like, it could not be done in any other medium than video games. It requires that you interact with things and collect things in order to piece the story together in, like, it's told to you in tiny fragments. And it's also entirely possible that you can play the entire game without ever really seeing the, the story what's going on and stuff I really love that because people like Roger Ebert the film critic who say that video games can't be art and that they're they have a like really gimped way of telling a story and stuff he uh, famously wrote a very negative review of Dark Souls which pissed a lot of people off, and I thought it was ridiculous as well, because he was kind of comparing it to a film in every way, and going, well, this isn't very good because it's not, f because it's if this was a film, the story wouldn't be told coherently or whatever, right? And like, yeah, that's right, but it isn't a fucking film, it's a different, like, art form entirely, so, you know, shit. Overhead. Ooh. Yeah, this isn't good. Move! Defeated. Not really surprising, but as you can see, the full plate does prote protect you significantly from taking permanent red damage, so... And in level 5, there is an item you can get, or to be more specific, two items that you can combine to create a piece of equipment which does protect you, uh, which does regenerate red damage. So, that's good too. And there are also elemental weapons. Anyway, what I was saying was that Roger Ebert sort of said, I spent 80 hours completing the game of 2011 and I found it to be a soul-deadening experience. And it was like, well, yeah, because you wanted to be watching a film. You thought you were watch, you were, you know, he was judging Dark Souls as if it was an 80-hour film, and it's not. It's a fucking game, you know. Like the gameplay is what, where it shines, right? The game it uses gameplay to tell its story. It uses gameplay to provide an experience that you couldn't have with any other medium. And a big part of what makes Dark Souls so great as in its own medium is the fact that the story is esoteric. And, uh, and so you have... Ah! Sorry. <laughs> and focus on two diff completely different things at once here. Uh, you have this, like, real problem with film critics not understanding the art form of video games. Um, but I personally really hate games that are heavy on cutscenes. Now, things like Metal Gear Solid, for example, they are amazing games when they are games. But it's like every single time you walk into a new area in Metal Gear Solid, you kind of... it stops the gameplay and becomes a film for like 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time. And it's like... I just think, you know, be one thing or the other, right? If You should use the gameplay to tell your story, and if you can't do that, you're not you're not doing it right. That's the way I see it. Now, of course, I'm not trying to offend anyone or piss anyone off by sharing that opinion. That is just my opinion. And to get all the way back to where I was, how I started this on this topic is to say, 
The story in this game is similarly esoteric, it's told to you in fragments. You have to read the environment and read the things that you find in the environment and piece together what's happened. I find that very good because it requires that you use gameplay in order to get the story. It doesn't, again, it doesn't stop the action to, to tell you like a, a story cutscene and stuff. Not that I'm entirely against that overall, but I find that this way I find it much more gratifying because it requires that you put something into the story in order to get something out. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, ramble over. I hope that was vaguely like related to what I was actually doing in the game as well. I'm going to end this episode here. This was just a little bit of a random one to do. I'm going to start doing a bit more in the kind of uh, later levels of the current story mode as it is in preparation for level 6 when that eventually arrives. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe for more. And of course, I'll see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.